Okay. Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Vishali Saraswat from Mumbai. Um, can I request all the panelists to unmute themselves and Yes, wonderful. Um, Preeti, can I request you to share the screen for a moment for just a couple of minutes? So I welcome you all to the 16th round table. And um, I have been moderating. This is my 15th round table, which I'll be moderating today. It gives me immense pleasure to, uh, you know, share this journey with you all that NJH, in spite of lockdown and whatever things, we have been able to do the Sarla Sonawala conference last year, in which we did online. This year, we are coming offline. So we are having our uh, Sarla Sonawala uh, seminar. We are so used to saying it webinar, I've just almost said it. So this seminar, which is an offline thing, we are having it in the beautiful city of Vadodara. It is our 28th Sarla Sonawala Memorial Seminar. And we have our amazing line of speakers who are going to be talking about something which almost everybody experiences at least once in their life, headache. Yes, my friends, headache is a common entity and it bothers each and every one of us. So we must address headaches patiently and very, very effectively. You will see variety of cases in that just one day. So I urge you all to join us for the Sadla Sonawala Memorial Seminar on 13th of February. Can I request all the participants to please uh, mute themselves? Yes, thank you. Um, so this is on this is on twelfth of February. Sorry, did I say thirteen? My bad. So it is twelfth February at Regenta Inn in Vadodara. All the details will be posted on our Facebook page, in our Telegram group, and on various WhatsApp. And if you don't find it, just simply message to any of our uh, EBs and you will get the details. So uh, we are very keen to see you all in person after two years in Vatodra. Having said that, let's come to today's topic and today's panel. So today we are going to be talking about allergies. Yeah, so let me just introduce my panel today. And I'm starting from my screen right side. And that's Dr. Shahala. Dr. Shahala, just say a quick word about yourself. Uh, I can't hear Dr. you. Shahala. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, dear all. This is Dr. Shahala from Belgaum, your own NGH um, a member, a family member, sort of. And so today we are going to have a very interesting topic on uh, allergic disorders because I feel allergy disorders are basically are uh, not with the bread, butter, also jam for it, especially for an homeopath, because as much as we have a limitation, we have a wide scope also, and I think we can highlight a few points today. Thank you, Shahala. We'll go into details of it a little later, but um, uh, let us, um, Dr. Asrani, sir, a warm welcome yeah. to this Good evening. bunch of homeopaths. Good evening. Good evening, sir. And you are you are uh, speaking from Mumbai today. Yeah, I'm speaking from Mumbai. Yeah. Wonderful, uh, Dr. Bhaskar sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am practicing at Ahmedabad, working here, and will be talking today. Uh, interesting subject. At least uh, it's a bread butter for homeopathy. <laughs> so most of the cases that comes to us, almost more than thirty percent cases are related to this allergy. So we'll discuss it today. That's an interesting subject, actually. Thank you for joining us today, sir. And uh, Dr. Pradeep Garge, sir. Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Pradeep Garge from Aurangabad. And as usual, uh, we are again with a new topic uh, to discuss with uh, the most uh, 
uh, experienced persons like Dr. Bhaskar Bhatt and Dr. Asrani sir, who is always guiding us on the very right path. And uh, I hope everyone will gain, uh, definitely gain something from this uh, round table of allergy and they will pick up their practice very nicely. Wonderful. So this leaves me, um, I'm Dr. Brishali Saraswat. I'm from Mumbai and um, I have been practicing for last 22 years. I recently completed one year in my new clinic and um, you know, allergy as Bhaskar sir has rightly said, comprises of almost 30% of practice of a homeopath. So it's not bread, but I would say it's definitely <laughs> our cream. You know, it's, it's way more than our everyday thing because we do have very effective medicines and we do go to the root cause. But before that, it's, you know, any guesses how many uh, percentage of people globally are affected with different allergies? It is almost 10%. Yeah. More than that. More than that. So 10% are the documented one. Half of them don't even know that they are suffering yes. from allergies, like food allergies, for example. Not too many people know that they are suffering from food allergies. Australia is, um, you know, has got the uh, uh, reputation of allergy capital. 34% of Australians are suffering from allergies. So, um, you know, what are the commonest forms of allergies? Commonest allergies known in, in your practice, what would you say quickly if you can just go around uh, sharing the common allergens, known allergens? Uh, who starts? Dr. Garge. Starts, yeah, basically I divide it into three things where the uh, allergy is appearing on. So basic, it, it appears on the skin or on the, in the respiratory system or on the <laughs> GIT. These are the commonly affected. And I think uh, most of the uh, allergic uh, manifestations are on the respiratory tract and on the skin. And at Correct. third level, I will keep the uh, GIT. But very common is respiratory and skin. Right. Yeah. And any known allergens, uh, Bhaskar sir, in your practice? See. Uh, dust, pollen, uh, all kind of actually pollutants. They are the known allergens for so many people. Apart from that, certain food, proteins particularly, that causes a lot of allergies at GI tract or as well as on the other part of the body, particularly the skin or area. And the wonderful part of the story is homeopathy has got nearly more than 4,000 remedies and many remedies have been proved in such a way that they can say that they like this food, they, uh, they are aversion to this food, they are allergic to this food or food aggravates their problem or certain food ameliorates their problem. This has been never studied in any other science that every food product differently has been proved in such a way that every remedy says that apple is not good for antim tart or you can say onion is not good for fuja. Okay. So many, every remedy has got this desire and aversion aggravation and evolution. And this way, homeopathy studied these allergic problems since 200 years or more than that, since Hanuman proved the first remedy. And that was the wonderful part why homeopathy is working much better because apart from the food, so many things about timings, morning aggravation, evening aggravation, sneezing only in the afternoon or at the bad time or in the morning is a typical symptom of one remedy or other remedy. And that works wonder in homeopathy. And that's the reason Homeopathy has got multiple choice as far as the remedies are concerned for allergy. Beautiful, sir. Absolutely. That is that is the beauty of homeopathy. But then, you know, um, how much ever we say, we must understand allergies first. So yes. I would ask Asrani, sir, to talk about a little, you know, what allergies are basically. Thanks, Rushali. So for us to understand allergy, we have to first understand immunity. Immunity is a crutch we practitioners use. A patient says, Doc, why am I falling sick often? Oh, your immunity is low. 
Doc, how long I should take treatment? See, I have controlled your disease. Now I'm building up your immunity. So, you know, unless we understand immunity, we can't understand allergy. Then we have a versatile immune system. We all know. Allergies are a hypersensitive response to something which normally would be very innocuous. It's like, you know, we are in a group and somebody is cracking jokes and I am target of a joke, which normally I would just smile and brush off. But today I hit that person who cracks the joke on me. How beautiful. So I am giving a very ferocious response to something that otherwise I would just smile and pass off. This immunity generally protects us from infections and now it actually gives a very violent response and that is allergy. But understand one thing, as immunity protects us, allergies also protect us. So what happens is, everybody must have heard that we have a B lymphocyte in our body. This B lymphocyte, when identifies an allergen as a foreign substance, it reacts. It converts into a plasma cell and produces some immunoglobulin. IgE is the immunoglobulin responsible for allergic reaction. This IgE attaches to other WBCs and sensitizes them. These sensitized WBCs then produce chemicals. One of them is histamine. And what it causes is itching, Swelling, runny nose, watering in eyes, wheezing, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and if it is severe, it even leads to hypotension. So, we normally never check vital parameters when we are treating allergy because we feel, oh, allergy, hai na? why should I check BP? But if you have to understand the severity of the allergic reaction, you must check blood pressure. There is hypotension. So allergy is a manifestation of our severe response. And all the symptoms are also protective. I am allergic to dust. I am exposed to dust. And I get a runny nose and I start sneezing. That is my protection. With every sneeze, I'm trying to drive away the dust from my nostrils. So it is protective. If I get skin allergy, I scratch. And in that scratch, I try to remove the allergen from the skin if it is a visible allergen. If I wheeze, then I know that the person, I know that, okay, something is attacking my air passages, which I cannot treat, but I must take external help to treat it. So people, when they are exposed to a particular trigger and get wheezing, are told to take nebulizer or rotate to other things. So this is the way allergy protects us from an immunity which has gone little haywire that time. This is all I would tell about allergy. Subsequently, I will come in and I may answer other questions. Thank you. Wonderful. You know, that's a very important point which sir has raised and it's an eye-opener. How many times we get up from our chair and actually examine a patient of allergy? It's, it's a reminder. We must examine them thoroughly and must take their vitals. So, definitely. Um. Now, can I ask Bhaskar sir, in your experience, um, what is the chance of a patient landing into, you know, severe, severe cases and uh, how vigilant are you when you are treating uh, allergy cases? Right. 
there are three things we should remember when there are serious you can say condition like uh, asthmatic condition where beyond your control you need to examine the patient properly or you need to treat them with a repetitive medicine medication and i had seen certain cases where they have got a sudden asthmatic attacks because of the sudden allergic allergic condition if you study it well in latin america at times arsenic or ibuka or antim tart or even many other remedies which is indicated you must see the vital points if you can uh, select them yes this patient has got every night at 12 o'clock midnight getting severe attack and then afterward the patient is gradually can lie down by 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock and can sleep you need arsenic to for the patient so if you are able to see the things properly even the serious condition are controlled with homeopathy with all many doctors or all the doctors i will say the only thing is status asthmaticus where at times the child is very young unable to take care and at midnight we are not seeing him properly or he is not come to you just telephone you and say i have got a serious attacks at times you are supposed to refer the patient for a better condition because he need oxygen or he need anti allergic medication strongly to control that that episode but in a longer run they require homeopathic only to get out of it that is one part particularly some food allergies at times causing a problem with the glottis where there is a lot of inflammation and patient cannot talk cannot breathe cannot uh, you can say deglutition is hampered and that is a vaso at times serious shocking condition there is a condition where you are supposed to understand that you are too late and he is to, he is to be admitted in the hospital he need a hospitalization to tackle the things but on an, on an average when patient comes to your clinic with all background that i used to get this kind of attack and he is having a problem but comfortably he can talk to you he can narrate it he give the description usually you tackle them absolutely in a decent manner and patient is responding extremely well so you should realize where there is a condition out of control and where there is a condition you can tackle well and this demarcation is done with all what is the doctor sanjay sir said that all actually normal physiological functions of the body we are supposed to check blood pressure uh, chest respiration apart from that oxygen level etc you are supposed to check it actually to confirm that you are on a right pathway wonderful so you know i'll again come to asani sir now sir just tell us what are the types of allergies and what are the life threatening stages wherein not only homeopath but any practitioner who is a family physician you know a go to kind of a doctor who has to stop uh, himself from stretching the case and uh, refer it to a hospital or a uh, maybe a physician exactly. who can manage it better or who can effectively in the moment give treatment and it becomes like a, a life threatening case so what is the time wherein we should stop ourselves and we should refer uh, the case to more efficient management see anaphylactic shock everybody must have heard and anaphylactic shock is most common with drug allergy so you have to always take even if you are treating with homeopathy you have to always take drug allergy of allopathy because you know you may have a patient who has allergy due to drugs and you may keep treating and may not get any result secondly one thing you must understand every subsequent attack of allergy to the same allergen is much more severe right so i hit this person now because he cracked the joke on me next day i may give him two bumps so you know you have to be very careful people you know you should never try 
he okay now you go and try that item and see whether you are allergic to or not no way secondly common misconceptions people will say i am allergic to ice cream ice cream is not giving allergy to anyone you can give ice cream to even a patient with 104 fever now anaphylaxis there is virtually no time to even reach a hospital because what happens is what swelling I am getting on the skin or in my nose, I am getting that swelling inside my larynx. And my larynx is going into a spasm and killing me. The only thing that can save a patient that time is adrenaline injection, either intramuscular or intracardiac and corticosteroid. These are life-saving drugs. Like, you know, we purchase them once a year and next year when we throw them away, no, because they are not being used, expired, we are thankful that we didn't have to use them. <laughs> Whatever facility you have, any anaphylactic can go the wrong way and die at your hands. So, idea is to understand. People waiting in your clinic your receptionist have to understand what is an emergency and take that patient in first. I don't want a patient dying in the waiting room. So two things, adrenaline, corticosteroid, and third is oxygen, which of course we cannot all keep for the sake of one emergency, which may not happen. But nowadays you have those cylinders, at least you can use them till the patient can be transported. But I suggest that all of you should have one adrenaline, one corticosteroid lying in the clinic. I am sure everyone knows how to use or give an injection, IV or IM. One uncommon allergen, I will tell you, is uh, mites. So, dust mites are different. Now, I had a patient who started coughing. Newly married, started coughing within one week of marriage and the family thought that she had And she told me, doctor, I never had this cough. And she was wheezing. So I took detailed history and we found out that uh, because they had a smaller house, they are going to another house to sleep. So I said, oh, what is the mattress like? The mattress is there only. I said, do you get cough the minute you lie down? Yes. We made her change the mattress and the cough vanished. So today, people who get more cough, more wheezing in the night, using a vacuum cleaner is a good part of therapy in addition to your medication. So you have to think wide. You have to ask, tell me the first time you had this problem. No, few months back. No, no. First time, what were you doing then? And then whenever an attack comes, no, what did you consume? What did you touch 10 minutes prior to your attack? Okay. Itching, wheezing, whatever. Then only you'll be able to narrow down to what is causing it and then treat it. One last point before I give the stage to Vrushali. If a nasal allergy is not responding, just changing medicines won't help because see, nasal allergy over a period of time enlarges inferior terminates. That over a period of years leads to polyps. So if there is a mechanical problem there, giving medications does not help. And all nasal and respiratory allergy, the first most important treatment is hydration. Or I would say three most important treatments are hydration, hydration, hydration. Right. Very dramatic. I, I, would, I would like to add something Yeah. about the mites particularly. I have advised my patients since last almost 30 years that those who are having coughing or allergic sneezing, that the moment they go to the bed, most of them, I said, change your bed sheet actually every day wash bed sheet to be used every day wash it 
and the every day that is to be used only, gradually, the number of attacks have been reduced a lot. Or even the pillow cover, even the bedsheet that they are using to cover themselves. There should be, I mean, three of them should be changed every day. Gradually, their intensity is less than a lot. So I will share one case of- uh, I'll but my... add one line only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This tells you that, you know, today a successful doctor has to think outside the box. Right. Absolutely. What you learned in your medical college is not going to give you a good name. Please go ahead. And you have to have so your antennas out. And a very sharp. Alert. Very sharp so yeah. that, that's what I'm going to mention in this case. Where eight-year-old uh, child, she came with her father to my clinic and uh, she had a lot of hives all over her body, big, big hives were then just scratching continuously. And with that allergy, she had got fever also. There was no cold cough, nothing or no other uh, focal infection, but she just had that those hives and um, uh, fever with chilliness. So um, I, and she went on say, like, I mean, I was defining the case. I asked her whether this happened first time or it has happened in the past also. So, you know, very like softly under her breath, she said, last time when I went Nani house, same thing happened. And, you know, that, that is the thing which I picked up and I asked her, Ki, uh, what happened when you went to her? house so she said you know that the, there is this extra spare room which we kids use which is not used every day in uh, nanny's house and the, that's why last time also same thing happened so then i asked them to check the mattress and everything and there were mites there i had given her different remedy which we would not think for these kind of hives or anything i had given her rest talks because she had body ache she had chilliness with fever and red uh, rashes. So that was the totality for rust ox. And that completely cleared it within six hours or so. Rust ox is a wonderful remedy overall for the all allergic conditions. With the yeah. skin problem. But the hives we will not think first as rust ox. No, not first either, but it is a yeah. really wonderful remedy. Yeah. So the, the point was you have to be cautious. Like yes, absolutely sir. alert yes, and everything what the patient says you have to, you know, should yes. be a part of your totality. Right. So, you know, sir has mentioned a couple of very, very good points. Like we must have injectable adrenaline in our clinic. At least it will become life-saving. If we don't have, we should have, uh, I, I would, uh, you know, take the liberty of saying courage to refer the patient to the right resource. Rather than what we are doing, what are, a lot of people will be doing it. You are yes. right. Yes, we should not sit with this ego. Yes, yes, my yes. Uh, uh, epis or my arsenic is going to help in this moment. No, no. we should it's refer not, and we should. It's sort not more than least. Yeah. yeah, it's not about ego or more. It's more about the time factor. You know, in seconds, you know, sometimes you are at your wits' end. I think the emergency numbers I feel should be more readily available. So especially in a place like Belmont, where I practice, we have throughout the year, we have allergic rhinitis. Perineal allergic rhinitis is one of the most common conditions. You can say 75% of the patients who walk in a day, at least on average uh, homeopath or even maybe a general practitioner, I don't know about them, we will see at least 15 to 20 allergic cases. Rhinitis, most of the time, sinusitis so, and other know, things. Dr. Yeah. Shal, if you can just give me one minute. Sir has mentioned about nasal allergies, hydration. So when you say hydration, does that mean the only the nasal turbinate hydration or like overall hydration? Overall hydration. So all my prescription for allergy, I first put a line on the prescription paper. I said what I'm writing below is important. Otherwise, what I'm writing above will not work. So, two liters of water, two glasses of buttermilk, two fruits which are containing good amount of water. water. And a nasal spray which is saline, which is not a drug. Yeah. Or plain steam inhalation, no wicks, no other balm. Yes. yes. So, so we need to hydrate our, because you know, respiratory passages are supposed to be moist. And with allergy, they become dry. And we need to moisten them. 
wonderful so no. oral hydration as as like along with that nasal hydration is what is needed yeah. to treat nasal allergies yeah so now we can just now we've understood the factual uh, details of allergy and about how to diagnose and where to stop um as a homeopath can i ask the three of you uh, dr shahla dr garge and uh, bhaskar sir um where do we think is the role of allergen and the patient like you know what is the homeopathic concept we have said that shellfish is one of the top topmost allergen nuts any kind of nuts are allergen for respiratory as well as for uh, git and um seafood in general is an allergen pollens are allergen dust dust mite but how much do is the role of an allergen into having allergy uh should i start yes sir uh, there are the role of the allergen is only possible when the person has got low immunity since birth it is there since hereditary it is because he is exposed to unusual conditions so lot many other factors they work equally important for allergen to work as an at an extreme level usually as a what dr hasan sir said as a preventive method body is dis- responding to the allergen so most of the people at a first time allergy when they when then they develop actually it is a preventive method for the body to prevent from the allergen and that is not so severe in the at a first drop it happens only in anaphylactic shock otherwise most of the allergens are gradually working because you are exposed to it and you don't live a life where there are many other factors which reduces your immunity good food habits good exercise good breathing having a good atmosphere taking care of the personal hygiene everything work together if they are not followed properly they are bound to get it there is one part hereditary factors are equally important if father mother grandfather everybody is having such that's the second part second part and third from homeopathic point of view the his i mean in the you can say miasmatic part if there is a miasm in the background in the patient or in the family history it definitely make him uh, weaker and it definitely lead to the various allergic problems so it is also important to understand after this covid actually a uh, lot many patients have come to me with a recurrent cold cough bronchitis uh, irritation headache sore throat and most of them i gave a dose of tube avira 31 dose and then they indicated medicine tube avira 30 at times 200 depends but they responded well after the no sod and then when the medicine is given they respond within 3 days 2 days or even a day their cold cough recurrent bronchitis or recurrent coughing is gradually reduced a lot wonderful even in uh, gi complaints which are coming post covid yes, yes, pub yes. is helping it works definitely. is helping definitely yes, yes yeah, wonderful definitely. dr shahla can you elaborate a little bit about you know how the miasmatic load is uh, he- yeah i think when we are talking about uh, allergies and the disorders especially when we understand the miasmatic approach or the homeopathic uh, modus operandi is basically that we need to understand the concept of idiosyncrasy idiosyncrasy like how stuart close has mentioned one man's meat is another man's poison so for somebody else it may be a medicine for somebody else it may be definitely allergen which causes things secondly the beautiful concept of susceptibility that we have in our uh, homeopathic system of medicines that points if you understand properly i think the management of uh, what you call may not get standardized we cannot standardize homeopathic management of allergic rhinitis but we come near to that because this particular treatment needs more individualized treatment than any other what you call um, uh, system which is affected so coming back to the miasmatic approach Uh, there is an underlying my mi- myism definitely but the 
most common miasmatic what you call uh, background that we see in most of our cases, you can say about even 90% would not be an exaggeration, is that we have the tubercular miasm. More so because the presentation is that way. You know, the soric presentation is there and it can go into a sudden what you call transition. There are very few uh, what you call the, it doesn't have to cross the psychotic miasm unless you have nasal polyps or you have a bronchial asthma, childhood bronchial asthma, but rest all cases, they land up into a separatic state. Okay. So the tubercular miasm comes into four and the very basic nature of tubercular miasm is that there is always a recurrence. Okay. The activity is very, what you call fast. And uh, that is how most of the cases present. You take a case of urticaria, you take a case of hives, you take a case of allergic rhinitis, you take a case of acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis or allergic asthma. The remedies that we tend to prescribe like phosphorus, like ars iod, all have a strong tubercular base. That is how we need to approach. But of course, uh, we have to catch them young. The pediatric age group uh, uh, patients that walk into a clinic are the most what you call uh, important patients that we have. Even if I just treat a case of tonsillitis or allergic rhinitis for that matter, I'm doing a huge favor to this child because we are going to stop them from the further what you call miasmatic elopement from one stage to the another. And uh, initially when we, I started my practice also, it was more of a theory for me. But after 22 years of a practice, I really understand that it has been a real blessing to practice homeopathy understanding the miasmatic perspective again because i'm saying we have a lot of allergy cases and fortunately nowadays we don't need reference when i first started my practice i was doing a project on allergic rhinitis i remember in my college that time i used to go to many ent specialists and the respiratory people to refer cases to me but now people just walk into it homeopathy is good for allergy and it is not just by uh, what you call the advert advertisement it's also that people actually are experiencing it Many of your people, patients, like when you have gone into such a long practice, the child has already grown up. Now he's bringing, their, he's bringing his kid for the treatment. So that is, again, uh, I think the basic understanding is you have to understand miasmatic approach to it more than any other disease. I would just uh, put up my claim that way. Wonderful. Dr. Garge, can you? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, before I move to that homeopathic part, I will like to add uh, something which Dr. Asrani uh, sir has said and Dr. Uh, Bhatt has said, uh, that this cleansing, saline uh, uh, rinsing with the uh, uh, nasal passages, uh, for nasal passages, it is also useful. One, uh, one important thing is use of ghee. If we can have a simple ghee, we can put one drop in each nostril at bedtime after taking steam. Then that will also create a barrier between the allergen and the nasal mucosa. So that is also one of the important things which I have seen in my practice that it works nicely. Rinsing the nasal passage with normal saline is very important. And along with that, use of ghee. Thirdly, uh, uh, one thing which uh, Dr. Uh, Bhatt, uh, sir was saying that uh, cleansing the uh, mattresses daily, what is more important that we have to find out the allergen also. Now, I had one case where all the things were done, but uh, still the patient was not feeling better. Then a very simple thing, which uh, we, in our discussion, uh, it was, uh, there was a pet. So that dander of for that pet was causing the problem. So don't bring your pet animal in the bedroom. That is most important. You have to keep it with that uh, animal out of your home. Then only, otherwise that allergen will go on acting and you are not going to get any result, whatever so medicine you are giving to the patient. So these are two things which I, I would uh, like to add. Thirdly now, miasmatic factor, which is most important in homeopathy. So that has been inherited from the parents, no doubt about it. But what I think that it is a very simple question that why I have started getting this problem? Why allergy to me only? So miasmatic factor is one important thing, but along with that, when we think homeopathically, the mind factor plays a major role in producing an allergic condition. As in one of the uh, discussions, uh, I remember that one doctor said, no, 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 you have to keep your wife out you are allergic to her, <laughs> apart from the joke. But this is what is important, that what mm -hmm. it is. Because this one um, uh, couple, 
they came to me and then uh, she started getting this uh, type of allergic uh, reaction rhinitis that it's sneezing and immediately within i think uh, two or three weeks of their marriage so again all the things were done uh, means all the history was taken and then there in that history it was very particularly i could see that there was a great you know, there, there, there was a history of disappointment and she has married because of the force of the parents so that was acting as a spark and that spark was actually creating the problem so we have to tackle these cases only by counseling and by with proper homeopathic medicines like natura or ignatia whatever comes in the uh, history so we have to think why this spark is there it is like petrol or kerosene is not going to blast or not going to get fire immediately unless and until there is a spark if that Wonderful. spark is there and if it comes in contact with that uh, petrol or kerosene then only it is going to get that fire if that spark is is coming in contact with the water then that spark is of no use so, so basically have, what you want to say is we have to identify individuality and yes. the trigger and yeah. we have to uh, address to the individuality more exactly right? and because we cannot... you know, even if we eliminate this trigger tomorrow there is going to be another one yeah so, so you cannot eliminate the trigger like you're married to somebody and then you have disappointment and you cannot simply go on changing the spouse yeah. what you need to do is you have to change your own soil and adapt to it yeah. and that's what exactly homeopathy will do yes master sir no i will add few things what we talk about the pets actually not only the pets even the fungus even the certain latex or plastic which is a man made and it has created lot many problems nowadays or you can say certain insects or even drugs in medical science certain drugs are not causing the anaphylactic shock always but there is some problem and they never realize lot many patients come to me for a coughing when mm -hmm. the actual the blood pressure drug was causing the problem yes right so yes. so many things which is out of the room out of the control you are supposed to tell them to check it out stop it for 3 days let us see what does it causing to you and gradually we realize it is not only the continuous factor which is causing problem has to be removed obstacles have to be removed that's yes. what dr animal suggested right third, third yes. part is the mental state that he dr garge said it is not only the anxiety and stress many many factors of sadness anger fear ultimately actually working on your immune system and you are unable to fight out the various allergens which you are earlier able to so these causes are to be taken care of when you are selecting a remedy that is must i remember a case actually where a woman was getting lot of problems of coughing and breathlessness on and off and the test were normal but she was getting lot of breathlessness on and off ultimately i realized that her brother was expired for a couple of years and he was the sole breadwinner in the family and that is in her uh, father's family but she is having a tremendous stress about it so what will now my parents and my baby and her kids will do because my brother has passed away and there is nothing in the house and the grief that was there and ultimately initia helped her a lot and then this she started helping other people i mean the, her parents right. so a right medication with <laughs> Uh, relation to her mental state or physical state will definitely help lot many other problems including allergies so that I is most important to add my one bit here yes sir even in patients who have a genetic tendency or who have a miasmatic tendency a trigger is required to give that response so i would say that if you are talking actually allergy an allergen is required right okay no doubt then if there it is not an allergen then we have different specific conditions like we have atopic eczema which will give you wheezing which will give you eczema but then there is a disease name allergen is required that is what my contention is and uh, i'll give you an example a patient whose father was asthmatic 
and this child got twice asthma in first year of life after consuming cashew nuts so they had a business of cashew nuts oh. i made sure till that child was 12 year of age that is the age that we presume the immunity becomes strong this child was not exposed to cashew nuts at all today he is 50 year old he can eat anything no asthma no cough no eczema nothing so oh. allergen has to be there and avoid list is very very important it should not be a generic list you know that torture the patient give a big list of 20 items no identify and then avoid so in general it is action and its reaction unless and until oh. there is some action then uh, you cannot get that reaction and that is a so idiosyncrasy the concept of yeah, idiosyncrasy right. we have yeah. spoken yeah. a lot of concepts so far and we have 12 minutes left and i have one question specially left for dr asrani sir before i go to that um, i want uh, all of you to share cases and it has to be less than 2 minutes whoever yeah. does it less than 2 minutes will be star of the evening today <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Tell one me, case i'll i'll give you one case yeah uh, a person came for a cold and cough long back at that time i was not knowing many drugs actually the rare drugs and she had got typical allergic problems at buddha way arteria or uh, spasm or coughing with the spasmodic attacks and then i found out a rubric they both of them are alternating in few couple of remedies particularly sinus p i started with the remedy and gradually within almost a couple of months both the spasms the spasm also went away as well as the articula also went away and that remedy helped him to improve overall what was uh, your indication sir uh, there is in the actually repository there is a rubric in the respiratory system for the chest the chest complaints alternately with the articular rash oh skin complaints and that sinus p was a wonderful remedy that worked actually the remedy was finished for him only and again i have got a question in last week i buy it again there is another patient also like that apart from that there are many other cases where particularly loss of taste and loss of smell in this covid yes and that uh, covid has gone patient is all right but his allergies are very running nose thin watery discharge and taste is lost and uh, almost smell is lost sense of smell and netembur was given on that rubric there is in the particularly taste that is mouth actually taste wanting smell is lost as well as taste is lost there are only seven remedies which cause all the symptoms all the uh, i mean all these rubrics <clears throat> out of them one of them is netremu and he has got a running nose thin watery discharge and with netremu his taste had come back within a week smell has come back and allergy is gradually gone so that's what i would like to tell you thank you to all the people who have come okay, sir you you were under 2 minutes thank you dr shala yeah i just started one case of pothos actually this particular uh, case came with uh, a very peculiar symptom what is there in pothos in so many years of practice this is the only case that i've got he was relieved by passing gas and stools whenever the asthma asthma came up and the remedy that i had diagnosed earlier for him was arsayod it did not work out then went through this this particular symptom i picked up and gave pothos helped him a lot that in 30 potency every 2 hourly for one day and then with tubafina one yam the case got completely better he never had an attack of asthma ever after that another very interesting case which i'll never forget is of a young child of 8 years old uh, she had an egg allergy when her mother told me that when the relay, her parents were going off to the airport after kissing the child they had had uh, omelet and they kissed the child and she got an allergic reaction earlier also she did mention to me forget about in cake and other things even if we are eating front of her she gets a rash so i was i would not believe that that particular day she straight away brought the child to me and said this is what has happened and the remedy that i had already what you call worked out a case with the totality sent us ammonium carb though ammonium carb does not have the symptom of a direct egg allergy this remedy worked very wonderful well but the other symptoms were very 
strong. For example, this child had the habit of always taking wicks and inhaling other what you call smelling salts like uh, um, the abrutanjal and other things. On that basis, when the uh, medicine was given, she's never, she cannot eat egg even now, but that particular tendency to have articular rashes on the skin is totally gone. And she's almost 18 years old now. So that's the one wonderful vertical case I have uh, attributed to ammonium car and understanding. Again, tuberculinum 1M had given as an intercrum for this particular child. Yeah, I had a one case uh, where uh, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, Dr. Uh, where it was actually uh, uh, treated for uh, uh, chronic diarrhea and it was labeled that is, it is due to some allergic condition which is causing some food. They have tested uh, all that on back uh, 40, 60 times that uh, picking and uh, all the allergy test was done. But uh, it was almost uh, everywhere. It was uh, uh, diagnosed that she, uh, the patient has definitely an allergic condition and we are not able to find out. The patient himself, herself, they tried uh, that what actually causing the problem. So uh, after many uh, treatments, uh, they came to me and then during the history taking, uh, as Dr. Asrani has rightly said that when first it has started, you have to ask what is the first incidence where it has started. So in that, uh, she told that, yes, uh, it was, I remember very uh, properly that uh, my husband was very sick and he was admitted in uh, uh, hospital for almost uh, three to four weeks. And it was very horrible time for all of our family. And I was there day and night serving the uh, husband. And uh, then I don't know what happened. He came back to home and then within two to three weeks, this problem has started. So considering this as one of the entry point that she has nursed or she has taken care of that patient day and night, loss of sleep, and uh, uh, all the problems uh, which she has narrated, the, this medicine, which I have never thought because she was uh, given noxomica and acid nitric, uh, this uh, sulfuric acid and whatnot. Acid nitric has helped her because that is the only one medicine where Alan Keynote in there, you can get that elements after continued loss of sleep, long lasting anxiety, over exertion of mind and body from nursing the sick like cochlear syndicus, and it has relieved with only four doses. I will not exaggerate, but if she required some uh, doses later on, one or two doses, but it has entirely gone. But this shows that you have to take the history properly, unless and until you get that entry point that is most important for treating any case homeopathically, whether it is allergic rhinitis, bronchitis, asthma, or any. You have beautiful, to beautiful, beautiful. I will Thank just add one interesting that. case, which is really interesting. Uh, uh, two cases actually I had with this medicine. Patient came, I was getting sneezing, but before sneezing, I get itching on my palate, which is a typical symptom of only remedy by Thea. I started 30 BD. Within seven days, his sneezing for a couple of years had gone. And that particular symptom actually, I observe in any other remedies actually, there are very less remedies. Biot is the only important remedy which is causing sneezing as well as itching on the palate. So that was wonderful. Uh, the patient beautiful. was so happy that within one week, my two years sneezing has gone. Yes, Asrani, sir. So this case, I'm not talking of treating a case. I'm just saying that how we have to think. I have a patient who's allergic to Udad Kadal. We have never seen that thing. And she gets very bad allergy. She almost died once. So once I told her that, you know, you can't keep asking people, is me urat ka dal hai ki nahi hai. <clears throat> we gave her a kit of one ampule of steroid, one ampule of adrenaline with two syringes. And we said, whichever doctor you get in that area or somebody from the family can just fill it and Push it in your thigh. If the needle breaks, injection abscess, we'll tackle that later. You know, few months later, she went to somebody's house and she said, I am allergic to Udat ka dal. They said, Dahi vada mat khao. Now, a spoon which was used to take Dahi vada 
she used that spoon to take plain curd and she got severe laryngeal spasm that steroid injection saved her yeah. so we have to always think either you give your patient your emergency medicine or if the patient is getting anaphylactic shock like then tell them to take from their allopath some life saving medicine to carry along all the time because there is no time to reach a hospital yeah uh, we have also adrenaline in homeopathy but uh, unfortunately no, or whichever way, whichever way. Use it. <laughs> let them be prepared that's all you know, how many see. of us have actual experience with adrenaline? Very few people are using sarcos, right? No, but I, and, I have used cortisone 30, cortisone 200, so one M, and that is work wonder. No, for, 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 acute, no, yeah. for acute attacks, it is, uh, even asthmatic attacks, we have blata orientalis, which works nicely. Even arsenic. Yeah. And... Uh, these are very important medicines which Lobelia and Freta we should have, mother tinctures also. Uh, they may be used in the acute cases. Right. A medical legal point here, whatever you are thinking will work as a life-saving drug, you should be prepared to explain. Yeah. We teach our doctors that whatever you give in a life-threatening condition, no, please save every ampule because you may be questioned later. So, you have to be very prepared to explain what you give despite which the patient died. Right. <clears throat> Wonderful. So, I will just take a few more minutes extra today because there are two important questions which are left to us. Um, so, Asrani sir, can you just quickly tell us if there are any blood tests which is a must? We must not miss them. There are no blood tests which are a must for diagnosing allergy. It's a clinical diagnosis yes. and the process of elimination. At times, you have to, like, you know, there are, as I said, that uh, antibodies made. So, a chronic allergy, a patient comes to you, you can ask for an Ig level to decide if the Ig level is in range of 3000 to 5000 then you know that this person is body is really fighting and I should not promise any result in one or two years time. Yes. And that Ig may not come down because that is his body fighting. There are IgMs available for everything. So I had one patient who came from US and he came rushing to my clinic, said I was having peanuts and I broke into these hives. And doctor, I love peanuts. So we did his IgM peanuts and IgM peanuts was negative. So I said, no, it's not allergic. Maybe something contamination. There are panels available for allergy, but normally they don't serve the return on investment. They cost 15 to 20,000 rupees. And now how can you tell people to avoid dust? How can we tell people to avoid cockroach? So you should specify and then maybe a single or two, three, like, you know, egg or chicken, you can do that. Otherwise, no tests are required. It is a clinical diagnosis, clinical improvement. Wonderful. Thank you. And um, just before I go to the homeopathic remedies, I will just summarize that you should have a corticosteroid, um, adrenaline and oxygen cylinder as the emergency kit for uh, managing allergies. Right, sir? Yeah. Perfect. So, um, very quickly, can the homeopathic panel talk about list of remedies, just the list, and maybe one symptom which is crucial. Um, maybe each of you can give us four, four remedies. Uh, I'll say, if you are going out and giving a kit actually like allopathy, the best is you should have arsenic, where there is a thirst for small quantity of water, restlessness, midnight aggravation, they are the vital points and extreme weakness or other drug, particularly when you are going out, actually arctic aberrance, if there is a case of arctic area, at least temporarily you can give relief to some point, to some extent, you have to study the case. It, it's, you cannot decide a remedy just within a moment, but right. this has worked wonder with the people. Right. Third thing is if there is an allergy in the eyes and there is a running, what I mean, the, clean water is coming out or thick discharges are coming out with nasal discharge, thin watery, 
which is irritating. You fresh air you should have or a limb shape you should have. So these particular remedies, there are many such remedies actually. I yeah. used to keep either 15 remedies when I'm going out actually with the people. But you must keep these things. These four, particularly yeah. allergies. So I'll so, go to the next person, sir, because yes. they will also have some of the other. Definitely, definitely. You will have the whole range. But uh, Dr. Shahala, can you say share? Yeah, I would again repeat, uh, and of course, Asnik album is the hero. Asnik Don't Alba repeat what he has said. Luxomica, Anything extra Lux, which you have. Luxomica, Hepparcel, Dalcamara, Rustox. These come both for the respiratory as well as for the skin what you call allergies. Right. And right. Uh, uh, specifics, basically histamine, I have tried and there are good results in 6 yes. and 30 potency. Yes. And uh, then you also have remedies like Kothos, which have tried in very few cases, but good results, but very temporary again. Absolutely. Not, not the yes. typical what you call... Uh, uh, poor, Thank poor, you, poor Dr. Effect. Shala. Dr. Garge, any four remedies? For, for skin, I keep paratica urines anti firing and rustox for respiratory yeah. rustox and for respiratory one must have sinapis nigra solanum lycopersicum and solidigo without these medicines you cannot achieve good results in respiratory allergic conditions sir can and, you uh, share any indication for solidigo uh, yes it is useful for asthmatic bronchitis caused by pollen allergy that pollen is most allergy. important. Yeah, here wonderful, you will get wonderful. blood, uh, pollen, any pollen, uh, specifically of solid ego, but it, I have found that it is one of the most important remedy for pollen allergy. And here you will get blood streak, purulent expectoration with asthmatic, uh, asthmatic spells. And especially along with that, one concomitant, which is most important, is nightly dysuria. If this okay. is there, solid ego is the choice of medicine. Wonderful. And can I ask Dr. Shahala to uh, share a couple of indications for histamine? Histamine is again specific remedy with hives without itching and in respiratory complaints, nasal obstruction, especially atrophic rhinitis after the abuse of what you call your drops like otrivin, where a patient okay. develops. Yeah, of course, the, it's again a specific, it gives a temporary relief. And most of the times I have found it useful by inhalation in what you call, uh, by asking the patient to put few drops in warm water and take the inhalation of that. So definitely it gives a temporary relief at least. Lovely. And so I have a couple of remedies which are like Epis Malefica, Merxol, and Antim Ars. These are a couple of remedies which are like my go-to without which I cannot handle an allergy. So the, like whenever a patient one. of allergy comes, I usually give five, six remedies as a stock remedy for them. These three have to be there. Again, in the rare remedies, Tucuricum and Agraphis mutans yeah. works right. very well, especially in nasal polyps and in adenoids with allergic rhinitis in kids. So but can I request easy. the panel because, you know, we are overshooting our time today. There is a lot to talk about. Can I request each of you to mention one prominent key indication for a remedy and write it in the telegram group. Can we do that? Yeah. yeah. One symptom will not be enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know, sir. But something which you should not miss. See, for GI tract, actually, for allergic condition, you have to go according to the food that has caused the problem. And uh, particularly arsenic, epica, pulsatilla, and axomica, you must have. Right, right. Okay. So maybe so you, know, like this. you can give us in. In just like you know, um, Rather, I'll, I'll genius of the, in the telegram group, everybody should write at least five symptoms for one remedy. That's that would good. be great. That would one, be one really will, great, sir. Will that will complete our discussion. Yes. And um, having said that, can we uh, also? There are a couple of questions, a lot of questions actually in the chat box, which I have made a note of, and I will be passing on uh, those questions to the panel as well. And they will be answered in the Telegram group. Okay. So, Dr. Um, Sharma has been asking a lot of questions. So, Dr. Sharma, the, there is your answer. Uh, we will be sharing all the answers in our Telegram group. So, get in touch with either of us and Join us on Telegram. All right. We are already six minutes over <laughs> our scheduled time. This is the first time uh, we are overshooting our time in roundtable. But the discussion is so enriched and so wonderful. 
Thank you so much to each and every one of you um, mm-hmm. for joining us today and a very heartfelt gratitude to my panel because, you know, everything what you have shared is um, so crucial to handling allergies. If anybody is starting out the practice, they can simply listen to this one hour and get going. And those like me who are in practice for a longer time can understand allergies much better. Yes, Dr. Garge. Before we go, I will like to uh, share one thing that please do try desensitization method for these allergic patients and it also works very nicely. It will take another hour to talk on that, but just I am sharing my experience desensitization technique please uh, you can refer it to uh, anywhere yes, sir i can i request you to write a, a couple of lines about this yeah. on the telegram group yes, so in this one month we will write about it once again friends i'm going to urge you all um, if you found this discussion to be a very rich one you will see way more structured cases and structured uh, you know, details about headache in Vadodara. So on 12th of February, join us in large numbers. Let's just have a, a kind of homeopathic extravaganza there at Vadodara. Yeah. So join us um, in our uh, uh, seminar, Sarla Sonawala Memorial Seminar. It is the 28th uh, seminar which we will be holding in the memory of the legend uh, Sarla Sonawala. And um, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Vishpala for continuing the legacy because, you know, uh, it's her vision and efforts to keep NGH alive and going. And I want to express a heartfelt gratitude even to my entire editorial board who has worked very hard to put together this uh, seminar for you, especially the Gujarat branch. Dr. Bhaskar sir, Ketan sir, they have been very instrumental in organizing this seminar. So come and join us there. And um, well, when you come there, we will talk more about the next round table. So you will get to know more about it. Thank you so much. Stay happy, stay connected and um, keep learning with NGH. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Are you meeting afterward?